What's up guys, it's the Devil's Talent here, and in today's video, we have the second installment of Viewer VOD Reviews. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Nianza and how he performed in Solo Arena. I'm going to be taking a look at the things that I thought he did well, and I'm going to also be commenting on the things that I think he needs to improve on. Now guys, I know that you absolutely loved the last video. But for me to continue to be making these viewer VOD reviews, I need VODs to review. So if you are interested in having your gameplay reviewed, please contact me on either Twitter or Instagram. Both of those social links are down below in the description. But before I get into this solo arena analysis, guys, please drop a like on this video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on post notifications for more content like this. And I hope that you do enjoy, and let's just jump right into the video. Now, I'm going to be going over what in depth what I thought Niansa did well and what he did poorly. I'm going to be starting off what I thought he did poorly, and the most glaringly obvious weakness was the amount of damage he would take in fights. There was a ton of engagements in these arena games where he would be cracked significantly or takes heaps and heaps of unnecessary damage would not finish fights end up getting more and more utility utility cracked and taken away and this is something that in the future needs to be minimized to make sure you preserve your utility because your impacts are always not going to guarantee you shield just need to make sure that when you're ending these fights fast that you are keeping preserving your health because it is precious, especially with the lower chest spawn rate. Now we're going to jump right on the wall, being super aggressive. And unfortunately, again, no. What ends up happening in that situation, we double swing, we get cracked, we take unnecessary damage. Now this is going to be another example of taking unnecessary damage. We know that this opponent is here up front. So why are we open tarping? So we get absolutely fried. And then we aren't connected to anything. And we're getting absolutely fried. Fortunately we do have a flopper. But again, you're not always going to have this utility. The next aspect that I thought that he did poorly was his crosshair placement as well as his aim after making edits. There was a lot of times he had significant advantage in terms of peace control on his opponents and did not finish fights quickly, allowing them to escape due to missed shots, as well as sometimes where he was staring at an opponent waiting for him to make an edit and he completely missed the shot with the type of pre-fires as they opened up and this can be attributed to poor crosshair placement since he is a mouse and keyboard player. Now, this aspect is going to funnel into what I thought he did poorly as the third thing. Good angle, good piece control, and then unfortunately whiffs the shot and then allows his opponent to escape, which is now going to extend the fight and use more fight, use more resources. And then attempts a pre-fire, reading his opponent well. However, not good enough crosshair placement and his opponent ends up getting a crack while Niansa gets no damage. Good recognition right there to flip that ramp and then has that wall and then misses the shot again. Now it is the second time when he's been advantage at his opponent and hasn't finished the fight, this particular fight. The third thing I thought he did poorly was not finishing some fights as fast as he should have. Again, due to this lack of hitting shots and poor crosshair placement, this allowed the fights to extend longer and longer than they needed to be. There was at least two times where he had ramp and wall control on his opponent and unfortunately was not able to finish the fight instantly and the fights extended. This is going to now further allow a waste of materials, a waste of possible utility, and invite third parties. When you have that amount of advantage in terms of peace control on your opponent it is imperative to hit your shots and finish the fight fats and something that needs to definitely be worked on and this again kind of funnels into the crosshair placement slash aim this again extends fights which is never good when you're trying to w key now we jump right here on the wall which i don't like now this angle is much better much safer much better but doesn't get the wall to get it's immediately cone and then poor crosshair placement once again kind of unfortunately gets us kind of screwed a little bit 
Better cross replacement. We can definitely crack our opponents if we read that. But him getting the cone off. If he had stained at that right hand peak as well. Wouldn't be in this situation. This is the one fight where I think. Maybe just because of the terrain. But didn't switch to hard immediately. And then as soon as he did. He is able to get one heal off. And then he exhibits the same thing which he had been exhibiting. Which is. Good understanding of how to get out. But unfortunately just mechanically messed up. Boxes up again. Gets cone from the opponent. Notice still hasn't gotten the heal off. What he could do in this situation is place a ramp and flip it and make sure that he can get the minis off. But don't go for that edit and then opponent has that. He gets cone slid. Notice how this fight is dragging on. But gets kind of bailed out. But look how much damage we have. We weren't able to get... We had to use a ton of utility, ton of heals. And we're only going to be coming out of here with 125. And again, it's just something that could have been avoided. Just with some better better understanding from the initial part. Now, Niance's gameplay was not entirely bad. He definitely demonstrated some very, very good things. The most glaringly obvious thing that I thought that he demonstrated well was his understanding and use of exploits. There was two clips where he used a clicks exploit and a crash mode exploit to end fights instantaneously. These were his two best engagements of the VOD review. His use of exploits ended these fights instantaneously without him taking a single bit of damage and were by far the best two kills of the entire VOD review. So he sees his opponent here and he has a harpoon and what I love right here, boom, beautiful kind of clicks type exploit to just kind of cycle in the box and get his opponent napping and catching him off guard and ends the fight with some really good aim and obviously good understanding of the exploit kind of with the click slash kind of harpoon strategy which nets him some free points and a preservation of his health and shield which again is key if you are w king so he sees this opponent down on low and he has crash point crash pads in his inventory and decides to use it perfectly to get a huge 180 crack beautiful peace control to capture his opponent and a nice little bludgeon a nice little montage clip for niensa really really good stuff and again demonstrating his big understanding of exploits this is the second time in this vod review where he has really shown good understanding of exploits and has ended fights flawlessly without taking damage and extremely fast with two massive 180 pumps the next thing that i thought niensa did extremely well was extending boxes to get his heals off and try to attempt to get damage on his opponent so he could heal every time that he got fried for the most part he would extend out and then again get his heals off in two particular engagements where he was at significant health disadvantage he got his health back up to advantage by extending multiple times and allowing or not allowing avoiding opponent pressure and thus allowing him to get back to a more even and fair fight now you're going to see that Niensa gets fried in this clip but immediately switches to his hard mats and allows him to get his heals off. He ends up for also going for a damage shot but doesn't hold the wall. But that is a good example of understanding of double boxing away, putting the ramp behind you, getting you space away from your opponent, allowing to get your heals off. And that gives you a nice double box to basically get a attempt at an angle of where your opponent is. Your opponent now only instead of having to jump on one box has to figure out where you're out where you're at out of two and it can definitely end up benefiting you getting you maybe a peace control cone as he jumps on the box away from you and a big pump in an end of the fight doesn't happen here but good understanding from niensa and he shows it throughout the third and final aspect that i thought niensa did extremely well was pre-fight damage there was almost no opponent that was not tagged first in any of the engagements and it showed this would usually allow him to end the fight decently fast if he was close but every opponent that he ended up pushing was someone that he had health advantage on and again this was his ability to understand the importance of pre-fight damage which is the absolute holy grail of solos being a solo player you have to 
get pre-fight damage on your opponents to better succeed and end fights fast. And Niansa has shown that he understands this concept well. So Niansa is just kind of farming up materials and then he hears a truck go by. And again, a great example of pre-fight damage, which is going to put him at immediate advantage. So Niansa is again rolling up on an opponent. And then Nice gets some pre-fight damage. So again, Niansa at least has made his opponent a little bit weaker. So we're going to roll up on this opponent and attempt to take a snipe. We don't hit, but it's okay. Good follow-up with the AR right here to get a good amount of pre-fight damage against something that I think Niansa has shown very well throughout this entire VOD review. Well, guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please drop a like on this video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on post notifications. And I hope that I'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace.